Thank you very much. Welcome. This is a piece that I've written for Joe's. It has five movements. Each one captures something that I feel about his personality. He's one of our, I guess, the founding members. Only he and I are probably left from the very first concert. Our institution is only 27 years old, so we are... Uh, principal characteristic of Joe is the depth of his soul. For well, he's from a mining community. Lock Gelly, have mercy. You know they know about the blues there. He's somebody who has proven to us that the blues is truly universal. The thing I love the most about him is that he stays inside the reality of our music. It's easy for people not from this culture to feel like the only way you can play is you have to be from a certain place or your skin has to be a certain color or you have to have parents that play the music. It's all kind of excuses and reasons why we give for not being able to play this music. Joe Templey's answer is his sound and his way of playing and the seriousness of that sound, the seriousness that he takes our music and how he's been an ambassador so successfully for our music for so long. That's why we love him with the depth of intensity that we do. band is a true band of brothers. It's, it, it's full of love and dedication and humility. And it's, it's a pleasure to be. I've been here for 26 years. And I, it's, it's just wonderful to be the whole time. I came, I came to America to get away from the Beatles. And two weeks after I landed in New York, the Beatles landed at Chase Stadium. <laughs> so, you know, they followed me. And actually, in my old age, I don't mind them now, you know. But I couldn't stand them then. I thought Ringo set the drums back 50 years. <laughs> now he's just, now it's just like 25 years. But this is a wonderful band, and I love it. And I love Winton, and I love all the people in the band. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. And thanks very much. So this movement is about the country soul of Joe. Country soul.
George, this next movement is about the continuum that we are all on. There was a tradition in our music up to a certain point of discarding all of the things that happened before a certain point, the newest fad in the music. Bebop came in, nobody could play before Bird. On that coma started playing, nobody could play before on that coma. Fusion came in, nothing was good before Fusion. For us, our music is in a continuum. We have no need to throw the great grandma out because we have a baby. All of us are here. And Joe represents that. Joe called me when he knew I'd have some music or something that was written, very difficult parts. He would always call two or three weeks early. I went and get me my part. <laughs> very sneaky about getting his parts. <laughs> he could play music of all of the errors, the things that he had to figure out and learn. He would do that. Ways of playing on chords, he would do it. So this piece takes us from a kind of uh, different ways of shifting through major chords in, in a strange way to uh, 1930s and 40s jump rhythm to a 1920s jazz age groove to kind of chopping wood, kind of backbeat feel that uh, characterized music of the 1950s and 60s. And we put it all together in one piece. Victor Goins is going to play it on the soprano saxophone and it's fast and kind of hard to play.
Ali Jackson. Carlos Enriquez. Dan Nimmer. Now these next two movements are about different ways of beautiful playing. The first is lyrical, deals with the lyrical aspect of Joe's playing, and it's a waltz. And the movement after that features Joe also leading the saxophone section, is about introspection and wistful, a wistful quality. Joe also plays in that way. Both can be deeply romantic and can make you feel, exp he can express great joy and tremendous sorrow and pain at the same time. It's a wonderful characteristic. So this will be movement three and four, a waltz and a ballad.
Now this last movement is very fast. It's about Joe's temper. <laughs> Joe will cuss you out in a second. You might think you're gonna give him the good old head rub. Hey Joe, oh no. Joe will let you know in a second. This is based on a phrase that he plays. I gave that up one, didn't I? <laughs> I know that's not possible. No, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I know better than that. We can always do it one last time, Joe, so, we can, so everybody can see what it's like. Pistols at dawn, that's, that's the best of them. <laughs> I can, Okay, <laughs> that's mining community, you know. This is based on a thing that he, he plays when he warms up. I don't care where you are in the room, you're gonna hear him play this phrase, warming up. And he does, he's done it every, every rehearsal, every gig for 27 years, I've heard him do this. And when we rehearsed it, he said, I never play that.
Joe Temperley. Dan Nimmer on the piano. Ali Jackson on the drums. Carlos Enriquez on the bass. Now we're going to play two numbers by the master Duke Ellington to close. These are both favorites of Joe. Well, one is a favorite, the other is the iconic Joe. So this first is the last section of Black, Brown, and Beige. Very optimistic and elegant conclusion that Duke Ellington came to at the end of that piece. It's entitled Symphonet, and it features some of the greatest saxophone writing of all time. Let's see about it.
Walter Blanding. Joe Temperley. Now we'd like to conclude with one movement from Duke's Queen Suite. It's entitled Single Petal of a Rose. Thank you. 
Joe Tepperly. Joe Temperley, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to play a Scottish song for you by Robert Burns. Robert Burns. Joe Temperley. Thank you very, very much. We are the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. In celebration of Joe Kemper, thank you for coming out tonight.